Hi there Civic owners. Today in your 2008 Honda Civic, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Eco Hitch's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It does kind of stick out the back a little bit here, a little bit past the bumper, but the cross tube's completely hidden behind our fascia here, so you're only going to notice the receiver here at the back. And with this receiver being a two inch by two inch, it's gonna work great for all of your towing needs, whether you're wanting to use this for accessories or if you're wanting to put a ball mount in this and do a little bit of towing with it as well. You'll secure your accessories to your receiver using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer to secure your accessories. And we've also got locking ones so you can protect your investments. On bottom here, we've got plate style safety chain loops with a very large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. Our small one here, on and off with no problem, and our big guy here as well has no problem getting in and off of there. This hitch offers a 300 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. And that should be enough if you've got a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes. It's not gonna be enough for the largest cargo carriers we've got here at eTrailer to load them all the way up to the maximum, but you can still use those carriers and get quite a bit of additional weight here on the back. You're just not gonna be able to fully load that up to the max. Now you do wanna keep in mind that that tongue weight rating is the weight of any accessory inserted into it. So that'd be your bike rack or your cargo carrier, plus any weight that you load on it. And that'd either be your bikes or the gear that you're loading on your cargo carrier. It also offers a 2,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. And with 2,000 pounds, you should be able to pull some small utility trailers. Maybe you need to bring a mower over to a, a relative's house to help them out. Um, you should also be able to bring very small boats or jet skis as well. You should be able to handle with this also. So you do have a little bit of ability to tow some stuff with this. It's on the lower end. Uh, it is a Honda Civic too, so it, the vehicle doesn't have the highest towing capacities either. So you do want to verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of your vehicle's capacities as well. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper here, we're right at about, uh, right between about an inch and a half and two inches, maybe an inch and three quarter. And it does seem like the receiver does stick out past the bumper, but only by about maybe a quarter of an inch. This is important when determining if your accessories can be inserted into the receiver and secured with the pin without contacting the bumper. It also will help you determine if you can place the accessories that have an upright storage folding position, if it can be placed in that position without contacting the bumper as well. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're right at about 12 inches. This measurement's important for determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raised shank on your accessories. And since this one does sit so low, I do recommend a raised shank on your accessories. Another thing that's really nice about Eco Hitch is that the hitch is constructed of recycled steel, so that way it's better for the environment. We're reusing some components that would have otherwise been discarded. And additionally, to further cut down on their carbon footprint, they minimize the hardware that you get with your your kit, so a lot of the other manufacturers, if you got to feed fish wire bolts into the frame, you're going to get a fish wire for each bolt in most cases. Uh, Eco Hitch, they're trying to again minimize their carbon footprint, so you'll get one fish wire that you'll have to reuse multiple times. That does make the installation a little bit more difficult, but if you're really uh, looking to try to minimize the carbon impact, then that's this is one of the best hitches to do that. We're going to go ahead and cover the install step by step for you to show you how to get this one installed. It does require the back fascia here to be removed, so this is a bit more involved than your typical hitch installation. Um, but it's really not too overwhelming. The back end here comes off fairly easily, and we're going to begin showing you the step by step. I would say at home, I would give yourself about three to four hours to complete this. Uh, if you're very familiar with tools, you could definitely minimize that time for the install, but if you're a little bit green, uh, getting out there working on your vehicle, I would definitely set aside some time. So maybe like a Saturday morning, you can get up and get this done and take it out for dinner that afternoon. So let's get into the shop and get this hitch on. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle here. We need to remove the under shield here at the back. At the front side of the vehicle on your under shield, you're going to have a couple of fasteners here towards the center. We're going to remove those with a 10 millimeter socket. And then if we head towards the driver's side, you're going to have one here on the side as well.
There's also some push pins that are holding this paneling in as well. There's one here on the side, and then there's two towards the center underneath. To remove these, you'll see that there's kind of like notches there. That's to slide your screwdriver blade in. And then you can give it a little bit of a twist once you get it up in there to pop that center out. And then usually you can just grab it by your hand from there and just pull it out of there. And we're gonna repeat that with the remaining clips here. Once we've got the last fastener removed, we can drop our paneling down and we'll set this aside. We're now on the passenger side rear wheel. On the rear side of the wheel here, you're gonna get some fasteners that's going up the fascia here. We're gonna have to take the whole fascia off to get this hitch installed, so we're gonna remove these three screws on this side. There's three screws just like this on the driver's side as well, so we're gonna be heading over to that side and removing them over there as well. And then if we go follow that seam for our fascia up to the top here where it meets the rear fender, uh, the quarter panel back here, there's another fastener right there that we'll also need to remove. And that one's a little rusty. We're gonna switch over from the power tool to try to prevent from stripping it out. All right, and then we'll head over to the other side. This is all nice and loose here. Get all those same fasteners removed from that side. We're now back at the middle. We popped the trunk and there's two fasteners here on the inside that we'll need to remove. We'll use a number five Allen key to do so. Just zip those right out of there. Now we're gonna go ahead and peel the fascia off of here. If you think you might need an extra set of hands, I'd recommend grabbing one. They can take the other side. This is a pretty long and flexible component. It is possible to do it by yourself, but uh, you can definitely minimize any accidents by having an extra set of hands. If you're doing it by yourself though, or with an extra set of hands, Take the edge here and just peel it outwards. If you got an assistant, he'll be on the other side doing the same thing. If you're doing this by yourself, once you get here to the tail light, you'll want to kind of just keep a little bit of pressure across the back. We're then just gonna work our way to the center. We can reach around to the other side and get that side released as well. We're keeping a little bit of pressure on it here just so it can't come off. And now that we've got each side released, we're gonna roll our hands underneath the bottom and just walk that away. Then we're gonna swap to the other side and just walk that away. And then we're just gonna gently bring it back away from the vehicle and set it aside where it won't get damaged. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is take our exhaust here and we need to lower it down so we can get to the attachment point where we're gonna be putting our hitch into place. Before we lower it down, we wanna put our safety net in place here. So we're gonna grab a, a strap and we're just gonna hook it right there on the coil springs fine. And then we can take our strap now and just pull that up. And that way we'll just have some support there when we take the exhaust loose here. It can't drop down too far. Next, we're gonna remove the hanger here and it's just a rubber hanger. We're just taking some silicone lubricant and spraying it on the hanger there. And then we can take a pry bar and pop it off of there. Just like that. And down it goes. And that should be enough room for us to uh, get our heat shield out of the way and our hitch into place right there. So that all looks good. There's four fasteners that are holding our heat shield in place. There are three here on the muffler side and there's one on the opposite side. So we'll get these off with our 10 millimeter socket here. And they are a little rusty. They're quite rusty. And then our final fastener, if you run down the heat shield here, it's just here on the inside. The heat shield will then slide out of there. We'll set that aside as well. We'll now need to fish wire our hardware into place. I've gone ahead and marked the holes here uh, where we're gonna be feeding our hardware to. This here is the access hole. It's easy to identify the access hole because it's the biggest hole here out of the ones here on the bottom. And it's also kind of knurled up, the metal is, whereas the rest of these are just like flat. 
So we'll take our coiled wire that comes in our kit. This is how we're gonna get our bolts into position. I like to start with the hole furthest away from our access hole. So we're gonna start at this one here. I did put a couple of little bends in this as well, just to help guide the wire where I want it to go. We're gonna push the coiled end into the hole we want our bolts to eventually come out of, and then we're gonna bring the coiled end here out of the access hole. You might have to stick your hand up in here to uh, get the coiled end out because it's got that little lip, that little knurled edge lip there. Kind of likes to catch it. There we go. Just got to get it over that lip until that comes out the other side. And with our hardware here, you're going to take the bolt that comes in your kit. We're going to slide on a star washer followed by the plate here. We'll then take the coiled end and thread our bolt into the coiled end. Now that we've got that threaded in there, we can feed this all into the hole here. You might have to slide some of the spacers and stuff like that back off just to be able to feed it in there. And then we'll pull our pull wire. There we go. So it comes out just like that. And then you can take your coiled wire. We're gonna unthread it from our bolt because we're gonna need to reuse it to repeat that same procedure on the hole that's just slightly towards the front of the vehicle from this hole. We'll then go over to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing over here on the driver's side. I did mark the holes over here. They are gonna be different holes, but it's the same procedures. I've gone ahead and marked out our heat shield now. We'll need to trim this and put it back into place. And I'm holding it pretty much exactly how it would go back into the car. This is the passenger side of it. There's that little tab there that went into that bolt that was on the outside. We are gonna be cutting off this fastener attachment here. And there we go, with our tin snips, we were able to get that trimmed right out. We can go ahead and reinstall this panel now. You do wanna be careful around these edges. They could potentially be sharp. So you might want to file that down with a file or consider wearing a pair of mechanics gloves or something like that to protect you from them. Uh, be real careful just around that area. So now we're just gonna hold our heat shield back up into place. You can see where it's cut out around our fasteners for our hitch there. And then just reinstall all of your bolts. Just keep in mind, you're gonna have one extra bolt now because we had cut off one of the attachment locations. Now this hitch is pretty heavy and since we don't have fish wires attached to our bolts anymore, you definitely wanna grab an extra set of hands to help you get this into place because you're gonna to need to gently line up the holes and raise it up, getting your hardware through the holes without pushing it back into the frame. And that's very difficult to do by yourself, so it's really recommend an extra set of hands. And then what I usually like to do, just because this we don't have the fish wires and stuff. I'm just gonna thread just the nut on here just to hold this up. Just like that for us. That way it's held up into place because we've gotta feed on a lot of different pieces of hardware for this. You gotta use two flat washers, followed by a lock washer and then a nut. And it's just real hard to do if you're trying to hold the weight of the hitch up there and put all this together. So you can put just a nut on there on one side, then get the proper hardware on, and then we can just lift up on this, take our nut back off, and then put the washers and lock washers in place and reinstall this nut. We can now go back and tighten down our hardware with a 15 millimeter socket. And then we can go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. So now we're back here to our fascia. We are gonna have to modify this before it's gonna fit. We'll need to trim out so it'll fit around our receiver at the back here. So you'll find the uh, diagram in your instructions. I've gone ahead and marked it out. We also have to trim over here as well. I've got my marks on the back side. We're gonna trim that next. So let's get this one here trimmed out. We're just gonna use snips for this. 
You could also use a cutoff wheel or a razor knife, but uh, I'm a pretty big fan of snips. And now that we've got that trimmed, we'll take a file and we'll clean that up. I'll probably wait to clean it up until after we make our other trim over here on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over because we have our marks on the back side here. Because where this bulges up here for our exhaust to clear, it's going to contact our uh, eco hitch that we've got inserted in there. So we're gonna have to trim just a little bit of this out as well. And we'll take our file and clean this up as well. And we just wanna knock off any rough edges. Now we're about ready to put our fascia back on, but beforehand, it'll be easier to put your exhaust back into place if you do it now while the fascia is out of the way. So just put a little bit more of that silicone spray inside of there, and then you should be able to just lift up on it, on your exhaust, and line up your hanger with the little tabs there, and then just push them right on, just like that. We can then take the strap down that we had in place there, We're now ready to reinstall our fascia. So we're gently going to walk it towards the vehicle. Checking down below to make sure our cutout clears around our hitch. Just kind of drop those right into the grooves. A little bit of a palm strike there to put them in. Same thing on this side. And this whole time I'm keeping a little bit of pressure always towards the vehicle so it can't fall back down. Not a lot of pressure, just enough to keep it in place. And we got our all snapped in now. Let's double check our cutouts. Everything looks good there. Looks like we got nice clearance around it. We don't need to do any trim. Looks like we came out about perfect right there on that trim as well. We can now put our undershield back into place. We're gonna slide it from the front of the vehicle. And actually, looks like we're gonna have to do some trimming to make this fit. Uh, Cause right here, uh, we're hitting right there. So we're gonna trim out this center section right here. So that way it'll clear. So we went ahead and trimmed it out. I did kind of a slight V shape to it just to make it slide into place easier. This is gonna be hidden underneath the back of our fascia here. So you're not gonna see any of that. We can go ahead and lift it up, slide our undershield between the fascia and the attachment point on the bottom there. And we'll grab our push pins and reinsert them into place to secure it. Now that we've got everything reinstalled here, we're ready to load up our favorite accessories and hit the road. And that completes our installation of EcoH's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2008 Honda Civic.